Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about orbital diagrams. So if you remember from an earlier video, we learned how to write the electron configurations for a bunch of different atoms, right? And we said that the electron configurations of an atom represented the highest probability for where those electrons can be located around the nucleus of an atom. And so today we're going to build on that and we're going to talk about orbital diagrams. So what are orbital diagrams and how do they work? Well, it says right here that an orbital diagram is a visual way to reconstruct the electron configuration by showing each of the separate orbitals and the spins on those electrons that are in those little orbitals. All right, so basically an orbital diagram is a visual representation of an electron configuration. Okay, so if we take a look right here, uh, we have uh, we have obviously an atom that appears to have seven electrons. And so where are those first two electrons going to go? They're going to go in the 1s orbital, right? There's two of the electrons that are in the 2s orbital, and there's three electrons that are all going to be in the 2p orbital. Okay, so this right here would be an electron configuration for nitrogen. How can we tell? Because it has three electrons right here right it's got i'm um, sorry it has a total of seven electrons i apologize and so this is going to be nitrogen right and so uh, in an earlier video we learned how to draw or write the electron configuration for nitrogen it would be 1s2 2s2 2p3 and today we're going to learn how to draw these little orbital diagrams that we see right here a visual representation of the electron configurations that we learned in an earlier video so before we start drawing uh, the orbital diagrams. Let's first take a look at a few little rules that you need to keep in mind when we're drawing these orbital diagrams of the different elements or atoms. Okay, so the first little rule is called the Pauli exclusion principle. And so when we're drawing the orbital diagrams, we have to pay attention to the Pauli exclusion principle. And what the Pauli exclusion principle basically states is that uh, the electrons that are in these little orbitals here are going to be negative. They're going to have a negative charge and when you get two negative particles next to one another and they're very close together in the atomic orbitals, they're going to end up repelling each other, causing the spins of those electrons to be opposite. Okay, so the Pauli exclusion principle basically states that if you have two electrons in a little s orbital here, then one of those electrons is going to spin one way, indicated by the little up arrow, and one of those electrons is going to spin in the opposite direction, indicated here by the uh, arrow pointing down. Okay, so if we take a look at the uh, uh, electron configuration of oxygen here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, and then we want to write the orbital diagram or draw the orbital diagram for it, this would be incorrect. So why would this be incorrect? Well, if we take a look in the 1s orbital, one spinning one way, the other spinning the opposite way, and the 2s orbital, one spinning one way, the other spinning the opposite way. And if we take a look right here in the 2p orbital, we can notice that in the first little p orbital here, both of these are spinning in the same direction, right? So according to the Pauli exclusion principle, this cannot happen. These two electrons are going to have to spin in opposite directions. So this is an incorrect orbital diagram. And if we wanted to fix this, uh, we can see the correct orbital diagram for oxygen right here down below, right? If we take a look, oxygen is going to have eight electrons. The first two are in the 1s orbital. The next two are in the 2s orbital. And then if we take a look right here in the two p's, we've got four electrons in there, right? And so uh, in the first p orbital, one of those electrons is going to spin one way and the other is going to spin in the opposite direction. Okay, so understand the Pauli exclusion principle and keep that in mind when you're drawing these orbital diagrams. Let's take a look now at the aft bow filling diagram. So when we're drawing these orbital diagrams, you also have to pay attention to the alf or alf bow filling diagram. And what this basically shows us, and it showed us in an earlier video, is the order in which those uh, orbitals get filled with electrons. If we take a look at this little chart right here, uh, electrons will start to fill the 1s orbital. And once that reaches the maximum it can hold, which is 2, it's then going to start filling the 2s orbital. And then once the 2s orbital has a, a completely filled orbital with a maximum of 2, the next orbital to be filled is the 2ps, then the 3s's, then the 3ps, then the 4s's, then the 3d's, the 4p's, the 5s's, and then the 4Ds and the 5Ps and the 6Ss and so on and so on. So this little diagram is helpful when doing electron configurations and orbital diagrams in that it allows you to determine which orbitals are going to be filled 
first before others can be filled. And keep in mind that the S's, all these little S orbitals here, can hold a max of two electrons. All the P's here can hold a max of six electrons. All the D's can hold a max of 10, I'm sorry, of, uh, yes, 10 electrons. And all the F's here can hold a max of 14 electrons. All right, so there's two real little rules, the uh, poly exclusion principle and the aft bow filling diagram. Now let's take a look at Hund's rule and then apply these three principles to, to solving a few orbital diagrams uh, of our own or some examples of some orbital diagrams. Okay, so the third and final rule regarding the orbital diagrams is called Hund's rule. And it basically states that uh, when you start placing these little electrons or arrows, which represent the electrons in the different orbitals, it basically states that you must first put one little arrow or electron in each little orbital or box here before you go back and place a second one. So for example, if we take a look right here, here is the correct... Uh, uh, orbital diagram for nitrogen. We can tell this is nitrogen because there's seven electrons. And so the electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And this is going to be uh, an atom of nitrogen, right? And so this is the correct orbital diagram. This would be incorrect, right? This is the incorrect orbital diagram for nitrogen. Well, why? Well, according to Hund's rule, it states that in this 2p orbital here, you must first place one little electron in each orbital, all spinning in the same direction, indicated by three up arrows, before you go back and place a second a uh, little electron or arrow in the orbital. So if we take a look right here, this would be incorrect, right? This would be incorrect because we've put two into this little box before we've placed one into this little box. So the way that we can fix that is to have it look like you see right here. All right, so that's Hun's rule. If we take a look right here, same thing. If we take a look, this is the correct orbital diagram for it appears to be uh, carbon. We can tell it's carbon because it has six little arrows or electrons. And this is the incorrect orbital diagram. But let's take a look why. Why is this incorrect right here? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, if we take a look, uh, Hun's rule was not paid close attention to, right? If we take a look, we needed to place this one little electron in this orbital before and this orbital before we can go back and put another electron in this little box or orbital right here. So this would be incorrect. Also, this is a down arrow right here. And so according to Hun's rule and the poly exclusion principle, if you're starting with one little up arrow and this electron is spinning in a certain direction, then all of the little electrons in the uh, in these little boxes where there's only one, they also need to spin in that same direction. So you can't have an up arrow here and a down arrow here, okay? So understand that concept of Hun's rule, uh, the Afbau filling diagram, and the poly exclusion principle. So let's take a look at a few more examples of Hun's rule and then do some problems of our own. All right, so here are some examples of some orbital diagrams, and let's see if they're correct or incorrect according to Hun's rule. Well, if we take a look, this looks like it's a lithium atom. We have three electrons. The first two are going to go in the 1s orbital, like we see right here. One of them spinning one way, the other spinning the other way. That's acceptable. And that last one little electron is going to go in the 2s orbital, and it's going to spin in a, a certain direction. So this is going to be correct. If we take a look right here, this is also correct, right? Two electrons spinning in opposite directions, two electrons spinning in opposite directions. And then right here in the 2p orbital, this one little electron is spinning in a, in a given direction. So this would be correct also. However, this one would be incorrect right here in this third example. We have two electrons in the 1s orbital here spinning in opposite directions, two electrons spinning in opposite directions here. But in this 2p orbital, if we take a look, Hun's rule uh, states that this one little electron is going to have to be spinning in the up direction. Okay, so if we cross this out and if we wanted to correct it, this technically would be the correct orbital diagram for this atom of, of, uh, of carbon right here. Okay, and last but not least, in fact, if you take a look, here is the correct orbital diagram for, for carbon, right? So, understand Hun's rule. Now let's take a look at a few examples and, and do some orbital diagrams of our own. Okay, so let's do some orbital diagrams. And what I recommend is that you pause this video and try this yourself. So we have hydrogen, 
right? We know that there's only one little uh, s orbital, so it gets one little box, right? There's only one shape of an s orbital, so it's uh, it has one little box. There's one little electron in there, and it's spinning in a certain direction, right? So this would be the correct orbital diagram of hydrogen. If you ended up doing it like this, that too would be correct. Okay, so either one of these is going to be the correct orbital diagram for hydrogen. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, if we take a look at helium, helium has two electrons, right? And so helium, uh, those two electrons are going to fill the 1s orbital. One of them spins one way, the other spins the opposite way. And so here we go. Here's our orbital diagram for, for helium. And if you ended up putting this, this would be the same thing, right? If you ended up doing this right here that is exactly the same thing either one of those will be correct let's take a look at another one so we're getting bigger now here is lithium here's the electron configuration we learned how to do those in an earlier video so there's two electrons in the 1s one is spinning one way the other is spinning the other way and then we have a 2s1 so there's one electron in this 2s orbital it can go like this in fact if you wanted to uh, put this as a little down arrow that would be acceptable also so there's our orbital diagram for lithium Okay, so here we have carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So in the 1s orbital, there's two electrons spinning in opposite directions. In the 2s orbital, same thing. And last but not least, we have two electrons in this 2p orbital. So we need to make sure we pay attention to Hund's rule and fill each one of these little boxes or orbitals up with one electron first before we can go back and, and fill the orbital or box up with a second one. So if I were to ask you how many unpaired electrons does carbon have, the only way you'd be able to figure that out is to do the orbital diagram and see that it has two unpaired electrons, right? Two unpaired electrons. So there's our orbital diagram for carbon. If you wanted to put these both as down arrows, that would be acceptable as well. Let's take a look at another one. All right, so here's our electron configuration for aluminum. So two electrons in the 1s orbital two electrons in the 2s orbital we have six electrons in the 2p so we must first place one little electron in each one of these little orbitals or boxes before we go back and put another one we have two electrons in the 3s and last but not least we have one electron in the 3p and so we can put this right here as either an up arrow or a down arrow either one of those would be acceptable all right, so here we have titanium. Here's the electron configuration for titanium, and we now want to draw the orbital diagram. So it looks like there's two electrons in the 1s. One spin one way, the other spins the other way. Same with the 2s. We have uh, th six electrons in the 2p. So paying attention to Hund's rule, we'll fill each one of these up with one electron before we fill it up with another. The 3s has two, the 3p has six, The 4s has two little electrons, and last but not least, the 3d has two electrons in it. And so one is uh, going to be in this little box or orbital here, the other is going to be in this one here. So this has two unpaired electrons in it, right? So that's the orbital diagram for titanium. Okay, last but not least, we have nickel. So here's our electron configuration for nickel. We have two electrons in the 1s, we have two electrons in the 2s, six electrons here. two electrons in the 3s, six electrons in the 3p orbital, paying attention to Hund's rule. And if we take a look at the 4s, there's two electrons in this. And last but not least, we have eight electrons in the 3d orbital. So if we pay attention to Hund's rule, we must fill each one of these little orbitals or boxes up with one little electron, all spinning in the same direction, before we go back and fill the boxes up or orbitals up with a second electron right with a second electron for uh, 3d8 right here so if we take a look nickel has two uh, unpaired electrons all right so that's orbital diagrams in a nutshell if you like what you see go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below and i hope you guys found this helpful